so I'm audible. Anyone can please confirm? Yes, ma'am, you are audible. Yeah, you are audible. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, so we will start at nine, uh, nine five p.m. Okay. Hello. Uh, so I guess uh, everyone has joined and uh, like we are good to go and we can start from now on. Okay, so my screen is visible, right?
Okay, yes, any, anybody? Okay, okay, thanks, thanks. Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, welcome to our webinar of API pen testing. I'm Nandini Bharadwaj, the operating officer at Cyber Warfare Labs, and I'm very excited to have you all here with us today. So now let's get started. Okay, so before we dive into our main topic, I would like to give a little intro about our company that is Cyber Warfare Labs. So Cyber Warfare Lab is an ad tech cybersecurity focused platform that aims to solve the problem of cybersecurity by providing a real time hands on solution to problems faced by B2C and B2B audience. At Cyber Warfare Labs, we provide practical lab that simulate the critical infrastructure. As you can see, here's the infrastructure of Cyber Warfare Labs. Okay, let's move. Okay, so this let's introduce our speaker. So today we have two speakers. Uh, our first speaker is Rohit Sai Krishna. Rohit has over one year of experience as a cybersecurity intern, where he had developed uh, expertise in pen testing and identifying the vulnerabilities in various systems. He has a strong interest in Red Blue team operation, including web application security, enterprise network security, and API security. Rohit's experience and knowledge in the field make him a valuable asset to a cyber warfare lab team. And here is our second speaker, uh, Nikhil Reddy Pola. So here, Nikhil has over 1.5 years of experience as a cybersecurity intern, where he had honed his skills in API pen testing, a critical aspect of securing web application and system. Nikhil has explored various facets of API pen testing, including understanding API architectures, endpoint organization, and the security risk associated with APIs. His expertise in API pen testing make him an invaluable member of Cyber Warfare Labs. Okay, so this is the introduction of our speaker. So before we start, I would like to give a little intro that if you have any question related to this, uh, feel free to ask here from our expert at the end of the webinar. You can type your questions in the question box of your text, go to webinar text box. Also, uh, we will be providing the attendance certificate within the 14 hours and also uh, the video recording of the scene. So uh, without the further ado, I would like to Nikhil to take over and uh, let's get started. Let's wait a minute. Is yeah, Nikhil, visible? yeah, yeah, your screen is visible and you yeah. are audible as well. Yeah, yeah. Hello, everyone. I'm Nikhil Kumar Reddy Kula, and I'm delighted to uh, be here today to talk to you about API pen testing and practices. As a cybersecurity intern at Cyber Warfare Labs, I've been working extensively in, with IPAs, uh, APIs, uh, and I've gained valuable insights into their design implementation and security considerations. Throughout my 1.5 years of experience, I have witnessed the increasing import, uh, importance of APIs in enabling uh, seamless communication and the data exchange between various systems and applications. Today, uh, I want to share with you the fundamental concepts of API architecture uh, and highlight the security risks associated with the APIs. We'll discuss best party uh, practices that can help uh, safeguard your APIs and protect sensitive data from the potential attacks. During this presentation, uh, I'll provide a comprehensive overview of API architecture, including the different types of uh, API, 
their components and they uh, how they react to other systems uh, we, all, we also explain the importance of understanding the flow of the uh, data within an api as well as the significance of well designed endpoints requests or uh, response formats and api versioning so in addition to architecture we are we'll also ex uh, explore various security risks that api face such as injection attacks uh, unauthorized access data breaches i will also share practical tools and techniques you can utilize to identify and mitigate these risks effectively to ensure the utmost security of your apis will cover best practices including the rate limiting uh, input validation data encryption regular security testing error handling and security authentication by implementing these practices you can significantly strengthen the security posture of your apis and protect your organization's valuable data sets so without further let, uh, let's dive into the exciting world of api architecture and security best practices by the end of this presentation i hope you'll have gained valuable insights and practical knowledge that you can apply to secure your own API, own apis uh, thank you for your attention let's get started yeah we'll start with the introduction Yeah, in today's interconnected world, applications and systems rely heavily on the seamless exchange of data and functionality. In this way, APIs or application programming interfaces uh, play a crucial role. APIs provides a standard, standardized way for uh, different software components and applications to communicate, interact, communicate and interact with each other, enabling the seamless flow of data and integration of various services. So basically, it's a programming interface, uh, uh, like way to way for two or more uh, computer programs to communicate with each other. So APIs have become the backbone of modern software development, allowing the developers to leverage existing functionality and data from different sources to build the robust and scalable applications. Whether it's accessing social media data, retrieving weather uh, weather information or integrating payment gateways. APIs provide a bridge between uh, different systems, allowing them, allowing, them, allowing them to work together harmoniously. So public APIs are openly available for the developers to utilize, often provided by uh, popular platforms and services. So these APIs enable developers to build uh, innovative applications by tapping into the vast uh, resources and data offered by these plat platforms. On the other hand, the private APIs are restricted to specific users or organizations providing controlled access to proprietary systems or sensitive data. So, yeah, this is kind of introduction. Yeah, however, uh, within the increasing of uh, reliance on uh, APIs security has become the paramount concern. So APIs can be vulnerable to various security risks such as unauthorized access, injection attacks, data breaches, and denial of service attacks. So these uh, attacks are common on APIs. Yeah. <clears throat> to ensure the security of APIs, it is crucial to follow best practices and employ robust uh, security measures. So basically, APIs can be can be built using different programming languages. Yeah, like Java, Python, Ruby, and others. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, this is uh, our introduction about uh, API. Let's move to API architecture. Yeah, this is what we want to uh, focus more on. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, API architecture is a design. The structure of API that determines how it functions and interacts with other systems. A well-planned architecture can enhance an API usability, scalability, and security. So API architecture plays a pivotal role in the development and success of modern APIs, shaping their functionality and enabling seamless interaction with the other systems. It encompasses a comprehensive set of design 
considerations that are vital to enhance usability, scalability, and security, ultimately leading to uh, successful integrations and efficient data exchange. So, we are delving to, uh, into the uh, intricacies of uh, API architecture. One of the fundament, fundamental accept, uh, aspects to address in the is the choice of data exchange format. APIs commonly leverage formats uh, such as JSON, XML, uh, CSV to the structure and transmit data between the client and the server. So JSON is the most used uh, uh, language because uh, with its lightweight and human readable syntax uh, has gained the most popularity in recent times. XML on the other hand provides a, a robust and the extensible format of representing complex data structures while CSV offers a simple tabular representation suitable for specific use cases. The selection of appropriate uh, format should be based on the factors such as the nature of the data, compatibility with the uh, consumption uh, of applications and the specific requirements of the API. Yeah. So furthermore, uh, so API architecture refers to the design and structure. So uh, a well-planned uh, API looks like this. So we have a request and response formats and uh, we have API endpoints. Also we have API versioning uh, and et cetera, like uh, API security, scalability and performance and documentation. Let's discuss about the uh, request and response for formats look like. So APIs can use different formats uh, as, as I just told you, uh, such as JSON, XML, or CSV. So most preferable language is JSON uh, because it's simplicity and lightweight nature uh, and ease of parsing in various programming languages as well. So JSON is used best in, uh, in every uh, APIs. So, and the most important thing is uh, API endpoints. So, API endpoints are URLs uh, that specify a particular resource or action that the API can perform. So, APIs typically have multiple endpoints, each corresponding to a different functions or data entities. Well-designed endpoints should be intuitive, easy to use, and follow standard naming conventions. A consistent endpoint design helps developers understand and use the API more effectively and prevents errors or confusion. And the API versioning, API may undergo changes and updates over time. So the different versions of API may coexist to support backward compatibility. Versioning allows the developers to main, main, uh, manage the changes uh, without breaking existing client application. So it is crucial to carefully manage versioning to avoid the introducing breaking changes and provide clear documentation and support for depreciated versions. So we, have, we can also go with the API security uh, uh, as well. So API security uh, in the API architecture should incorporate security measures to protect against various risks and vulnerabilities. This includes implementing secure authentication mechanisms such as OAuth, like JWT, uh, JSON web tokens, yeah, to ensure that the uh, only authorized users can access the API. Uh, additionally, uh, authorization mechanism should be in the place to control access to specify resources or actions based on their user rules or permissions. Implementing HTTPS uh, encryption ensures the confidentiality and the integrity of data transmitted between the client and the API server. So these are these are all about uh, API security. So when we go to the scalability and performance, the main aspect of the API is uh, scalability and performance. Uh, architecture should consider scalability to handle uh, increasing loads and provide optimal performance. Techniques such as a uh, load balancing, caching, and horizontal scaling can be employed to distribute the load across the multiple servers and improve response times. Implementing appropriate cache, caching strategies can reduce the need of frequent database and or resource access, improving all over performance. And we also need 
better documentation and well designed documentation are essential for developers to who consume the api api documentation should provide clear and comprehensive instructions on how to use the api including the endpoints the requests and the response formats authentication requirements and etc so good documentation enables developers to understand and integrate the api effectively reducing the learning curve and the potential errors so for the good uh, best api architecture we need to follow these uh, these all points like uh, request and response format should be uh, in the formats of uh, in the languages of json xml csv and the uh, api endpoint should be uh, designed where very like uh, <clears throat> understandable and so uh, uh, there is no confusion of uh, we need to maintain the standard names for the endpoints and also we need to maintain some uh, versioning as well so we need to follow all these aspects to be the best architecture uh, to, uh, to maintain the api best or architecture yeah and also we have uh, types of uh, api architecture we have rest soap also graphql rest is like a rep uh, representational state transfer uh, so a simple object access protocol graphql is a graphql language let's begin by exploring these popular api architectures so <clears throat> rest short for uh, uh, i just told you a representational uh, state transfer so is an architectural style for designing network applications it is widely adopted due to its sim simplicity and scalability so RESTful APIs use the HTTP protocol and its verb get, post, put, and delete to perform the operations on resources. So REST APIs also are stateless, meaning they don't they do not maintain any client-specific data between requests. So they leverage the concept of resources identifying by unique URIs and use standard HTTP methods to interact with these resources. So RESTful APIs often return data in common formats such as uh, JSON and XML. Yeah, uh, that's all about REST. Now with a uh, simple object access protocol. Is it, it is, is a protocol for uh, exchanging structured information in a web services using XML. It defines a strict messaging format and set a set of rules for building web services. So SOAP APIs are based on the contract host approach, where the API functionality is described using web services description language, which is a WSL, WSDL. So SOAP APIs typically use the XML-based SOAP message format for communication, rely on protocols like HTTP, SMTP, or JMS for transport. Unlike REST, so, uh, so APS uh, provide a comprehensive set of standards for message level security, reliability, and transaction support. They are often used in the enterprise environment where strict, uh, strict protocols and compliance requirements, uh, requirements are necessary. Uh, now, uh, GraphQL it's, is a query language and runtime for API developed by Facebook. So it allows clients to create precisely the data they need and nothing more. Unlike REST and so GraphQL provides a single endpoint and enables clients to specify the structure of the responses they desire. With GraphQL, uh, clients can define their data requirements through queries, which are sent to the GraphQL server. The server processes the query and returns its response with the requested data. This flexibility eliminates overfetching or underfetching of data commonly seen in RESTful APIs. It also provides a strong type system and introspection capabilities, making it easier for clients to discover and understand the uh, available API schema. That's all about the types of API architecture, uh, REST, SOAP, and uh, GraphQL. Yeah, now with the uh, API endpoint. So uh, the main aspect in the API architecture 
as I told you, is uh, API endpoint. So uh, API endpoints are the URLs that specify a particular resource or action that an API can perform. Uh, okay. Endpoints are the entry points for the accessing the data. So here, the user can access the users or users endpoint with the parameter one. So uh, the parameter used to access the a specific data in the uh, database database of the web server. So uh, <clears throat> this is how the endpoint looks. Uh, here the users is the endpoint. So uh, each API can, can have multiple endpoints that correspond to different actions or data entities. For example, an e-commerce API may have uh, endpoints for retrieving product uh, product information or adding items to the cart and checking out. And adding out items to the cart is like a uh, post request, uh, posting the uh, JSON data to the API so that it will add the items to the cart. And uh, we can have the uh, checkout endpoint where we can check out uh, with the product. So, so uh, well-designed API endpoints are introduced, uh, easy to use and follow standard naming conventions. As I said, as I said, we have been able to use uh, standard naming conventions to the API, uh, API endpoints. So, consistent endpoint design can make it easier for developers to understand and use the API, and it can also pre help uh, prevent errors or confusion. That's all about the in, uh, endpoints. Yeah. Now the API security risk, uh, risk will be explained by uh, Rohit Sai Krishna. Hi guys, uh, I'm Rohit Sai Krishna. Uh... I have been working as an intern uh, in cyber warfare labs. I have experienced uh, about uh, different technologies and their uh, security risk. Uh, today, uh, I'm explaining about API security risk. Uh, API security risk is that APIs are vulnerable to many same types of attacks as web applications, including uh, injection attacks, uh, broken authentication, session management, and uh, inadequate encryption and data protection so uh, I'm explaining about uh, injection attacks. Uh, injection attacks uh, normally injection attacks are uh, in different uh, technologies. Uh, we specifically explaining about uh, APIs. So APIs can be vulnerable to inje injection attacks such as SQL, NoSQL, command injections. And some uh, um, non no SQL injections, and uh, which can uh, allow uh, attackers to execute malicious scripts. So injection types of uh, I will explain about uh, injection attacks. Uh, injection attacks are uh, common types of security vulnerability that can affect APIs. Injection attacks involve sending malicious data inputs. To, to an application in order to manipulate the application's behavior and gain unauthorized access to sensitive data or functionality. Uh, there are several types. Uh, uh, as I explained, uh, SQL, uh, XML, and command injections. Uh, I specifically uh, about uh, SQL injections. Uh, so SQL injection attacks occur when Attacker sends malicious SQL code to, to an application database, uh, they, uh, mainly SQL database, uh, through an IP, IP API endpoint. 
the attacker can manipulate the database to gain uh, unauthorized access to sensitive data or execute unauthorized operations. SQL injection can be particularly dangerous because they can allow an attacker to access the entire database of data and uh, potentially compromising the security of of entire application of API. So next is uh, XML injection attacks. And XML injection attacks, uh, when an attacker sends malicious XML code into an uh, application's API endpoint, the attacker can then manipulate the XML code to execute unauthorized operations or gain unauthorized access to sensitive data. XML injections can be uh, particularly dangerous because they can allow an attacker to manipulate an entire XML document, potentially compromising the security of an entire API application. And lastly, command injections. Uh, these type of uh, attacks occur when attacker sends malicious commands to an application command line interface uh, through an API endpoint. The attacker can execute unauthorized operations or gain unauthorized access to sensitive data. Command injections can be uh, particularly dangerous because they can allow an attacker to execute arbitrary code uh, on uh, arbitrary code uh, like commands on the application server, potentially compromising the security of entire API system. Uh, Lastly, uh, to protect these uh, injection attacks, API developers should follow secure coding practices, implement uh, input validation and sanitization techniques, uh, input validation checking into input data to ensure that it conforms to expects patterns or formats. Uh, input sanitization uh, involves uh, removing any potential malicious or uh, harmful characters from input data before it is processed by an application. Next, uh, I will explain about XSS. Uh, this type of uh, uh, attack involves injecting malice, malicious code into website or application, uh, mainly on URLs or uh, uh, in, uh, comments or uh, input fields, which, which is then executed by unsuspecting users, potentially leading to uh, data theft or uh, cookie stealing. Uh, mainly uh, fish fishing attacks. Next, uh, I will explain about uh, CSRF. CSRF means uh, cross-site request forgery. This is a common type of uh, uh, vulnerability in uh, web applications also, uh, same in API. Uh, CSRF is a type of a cyber attack when an attacker tricks an user into unknowingly performing malicious action or uh, like uh, transforming transferring a uh, uh, bank account uh, to other uh, bank account or like stealing money uh, uh, csr CSR, csrf attacks usually involve an attacker creating malicious malicious web page or email that contains a hidden request to legitimate a web application when the user interacts the page or uh, email, their browser automatically sends the request to is it made a web application and the tricking, tricking the user in, into performing the uh, action. This, this can allow the attacker to perform actions such as changing the user password or uh, making unauthorized purchases or even deleting uh, user accounts. Uh, there are a uh, few cons consequences or a CSRF, uh, mainly uh, can be severe. Uh, attackers can perform unauthorized actions on uh, behalf of users, potentially causing financial loss or damage the uh, user's reputation. Uh, uh, this can be prevented by developers uh, must uh, implement strong anti-CSRF uh, mechanisms like using uh, CSRF tokens. This involves generating a unique token for each user session and including it in all requests. The application that ver verifies that 
the token in the request matches the token associated with the user session ensuring that request came from a digit match source developers can also implement other security measures such as http only the cookies limiting the use of http request and, and session management uh, mechanisms regular uh, vulnerability scanning and uh, penetration testing can also help identify vulnerabilities and next is uh, broken authentication uh, mainly uh, in the API also, there is a weak authentication and authorized, authorized authorization mechanisms can lead to unauthorized access. Uh, this leads to uh, uh, this leads to uh, seeing uh, sensitive data from uh, API API database. Next, I uh, will explain about insufficient uh, logging. In this uh, insufficient logging. Uh, monitoring of insufficient logging and monitoring of API acti activities can make it uh, difficult to detect and uh, respond to attacks or uh, security incidents. Uh, you, now you see in a diagram, there is an attacker who scans for uh, vulnerable API endpoints uh, and obtains sensitive data through, uh, through API and any uh, sense the insufficient logging and the monitoring of a API activities are uh, so the log server can uh, send the sense to data to at uh, attackers. Lastly, uh, DOS, DOS uh, denial of service. This is a common common type in all applications. Uh, main, today we are uh, uh, explaining of DOS in APS. APS can be vulnerable to DOS attacks where uh, attackers flood with uh, many requests causing crashes or uh, big unavailability, uh, unavailability of uh, API to other users. Next, uh, we can explain about a demo for security risk. Back to Nikhil. Okay, you can proceed. Is my screen visible? Sorry, is my screen visible? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, firstly, we'll go with the uh, SQL injection. So uh, here is the URL where the endpoint is the login. So we have to log in with through, uh, through this endpoint. So with some uh, raw data on the JSON uh, format with the parameters username and the password. Here we are trying to uh, log in as an admin and we don't know the password of the admin. So we, we are just trying the username as the uh, admin as the username and the password as the password. Uh, look at the response. So we got the invalid response, and and we uh, we got to see the format of the query. So here is the format of the query, uh, which is vulnerable to uh, uh, SQL injections because it is taking the uh, values uh, exactly into the query. So we can manipulate the value of the. Uh, a username so that we can modify the query as well. So let's try to uh, modify the value of the admin so that it will <coughs> change the query and retrieve the information. So trying to inject the inject the payload into the username parameter. So let's try here. So we are here to see, use the simple SQL injection payload is like uh, using 
or yeah uh, we can use the uh, statement like uh, one equal to one which is always true and making the rest of the query uh, comment so here is the code where it check, checks for the admin admin only and also check for the uh, this statement which is r1 equal to 1 which is always true so the rest of the query will be commented out so it won't check for the password so it should return yeah this is the response from the uh, data we sent so we successfully logged in logged in as the admin uh, by injecting some payload like uh, sql injection here let's try again here Previously, we got uh, invalid username with the query format. This query format is uh, vulnerable to SQL injections. We should not directly use the parameters. Like we, should not, we should not directly use the values uh, into the parameters. Instead of you can use blind parameters. Yeah, here we go. So this makes uh, query to look like This makes query to look like this, where the admin or one equal to one uh, and the comment will be here. So the comment ends here and the rest of the payload is uh, uh, commented out. So uh, it won't check for the password. So ultimately, uh, we will be logged in as the admin. So this kind of uh, SQL injection can be possible through uh, APIs. So we need to be aware of uh, queries that we use in the API. So yeah, that's all about uh, SQL injection. And also we, we need to uh, be focused on uh, uh, indirect, uh, insecure direct object reference. Like uh, we have to refer the object based on the uh, exact parameter or uh, any authorization or use any tokens for that. So here, here is the user's endpoint where we can access the data of the uh, respective user according to their uh, ID. So uh, it may start with the one. We will get one user whose name is Alice. So we'll go with the two. Here we got Bob. So this endpoint is uh, for accessing the username on the email. So uh, <coughs> So it is configured to uh, refer the object directly uh, without any uh, validation of token or authentication. So we can access all the users with the direct object. So it's kind of insecure, insecure for the API. So we have only three users here. So once uh, we can try injecting uh, uh, different numbers here so that we can access every users uh, and the user names uh, that are present in the web server this week. So we'll try to inject zero. Uh, most probably uh, the zero will be uh, assigned for the admin. So we must uh, we must get all the users uh, as an admin. So I injected uh, zero parameter. To the user's endpoint, so we should get all the users. Yeah, we got all the users with the email ID and the username. It's kind of we extracted all the users in the database. So this kind of uh, insecure direct object reference is uh, very uh, severely prohibited in the APS, uh, so that we can use the JWT or any type of uh, authentication tokens to be ensure that uh, authorized user is accessing the, the respective data uh, that present in the data, database. Yeah, the 
that's all for now next next demo so uh, continued by rohit Hi guys. Next, uh, I am talking about uh, tools and techniques. As you can see, in uh, security risks are uh, more. So we have to take action uh, to reduce these uh, risks. So we we now talking about uh, tools and techniques. Uh, basically, uh, these are designed for API testing only and can be used to perform functional performance. And security testing of APIs. Uh, examples: uh, Postman tool, as you can see in uh, uh, Nikhil presented the tool uh, Postman, uh, SOAP API UI, and uh, REST Azure. These are uh, uh, other tools. Next, um, I'll uh, explain about fuzzing. Uh, API fuzzing is a technique uh, used in uh, software testing. To identify uh, major vulnerabilities, and uh, that the term fuzzing uh, refers to process of inputting a large number of uh, formed inputs to see how it reacts. So, majorly, uh, we can use a burp intruder to perform this uh, uh, fuzzing. API fuzzing involves sending a variety of requests. To an API endpoint with uh, different data payloads to see how an API responds. Uh, the main goal of uh, API fuzzing is to discover bugs or security vulnerabilities that may be present in the API, such as uh, buffer overflows, injection attacks, or uh, uh, major authentication bypasses. Processor. The process of uh, API fuzzing involves several steps. Uh, first, the tester must identify the API endpoint. Then he use uh, inputs, uh, inputs that uh, it accepts. Next, the tester generates a set of test cases, which can be either uh, manually or uh, automatically created. Finally, uh, the tester executes the test cases and analyzes the results to identify any issues. One of the primary benefits of uh, fuzzing is that it can uh, quickly identify uh, vulnerabilities that may not be apparent that through other types of testing by inputting random or uh, malformed data into an uh, API. Testers can uncover security flaws that might not be detected through more traditional uh, testing testing methods like a uh, manual testing. Another uh, advantage of uh, API fuzzing is that it can be usually automated, making it a cost-effective and a time-efficient way to test large-scale applications. Automated API fuzzing tools can be uh, run thousands of test cases in a matter of hours, providing testers with uh, valuable insights into an application security posture. However, it's important to note that API fuzzing is not a panacea for all security issues. Like any testing, it has its limits and can only identify vulnerabilities that is specifically designed to detect. Additionally, API fuzzing can be sometimes generate false positives or miss critical security flaws. So it should be used in conjunction with other testing techniques. So Lastly, uh, API fuzzing is uh, available to for uh, identifying security vulnerabilities in an application's API. Okay. While API fuzzing has its limitations, it remains an important component of any comprehensive security testing strategy. Next, I will explain about uh, reverse engineering of APIs. Uh, reverse engineering the uh, APIs. Uh, can be used to analyze the APIs communication protocol and uh, message formats to identify potential security uh, vulnerabilities. 
uh, API reverse engineering is a process of analyzing the application's API to understand its functionality, structure, and behavior. It involves deconstructing the API to identify how it works and how it can be used. This technique can be used by developers, security researchers, and hackers to gain better understanding of an application's inner workings. The first step in API reverse engineering is to identify the API endpoints and methods that are exposed by application. Once this information has been gathered, it can be used to generate a detailed map of the API, including all available uh, endpoints, their inputs and uh, outputs, and the data formats that can, that are used. Next, the API can be tested to identify its behavior under uh, different conditions. This can involve sending a variety of requests to API to see how it responds, analyzing the responses to determine what data is returned and testing different inputs to see how API handles them. Reverse engineering and API can be uh, consuming, time consuming and complex process requiring a deep understanding of underlying applications and its programming languages. However, the insights gained from process can be invaluable for developers who want to build applications that integrate with the target API or security researchers who want to identify vulnerabilities in the API. There are several tools available to assist with API uh, reverse engineering, include decompilers, debuggers, packet sniffers. These uh, tools can be really help developers and researchers analyze the structure and behavior of an API and identify potential security. Plus, one of the primary benefits of uh, API reverse engineering is that it can provide insights into how an application API works, which can help developers build more effective integrations and applications. Additionally, by identifying vulnerabilities in an API, security researchers can help developers improve security posture of their applications. In conclusion, uh, API uh, reverse engineering is a powerful technique that can be provide valuable insights into how an application API works and how it can be tested. While this process is complex and time consuming, it can help developers build more effective integrations and can help security researchers identify and mitigate uh, potential vulnerabilities. Next, uh, I'm explaining about uh, manual testing. It is a uh, common for, uh, for testing for uh, newly made uh, API uh, application testing. Uh, Manual testing involves manually exploring the testing of an API for uh, security vulnerabilities uh, and uh, checking the uh, functionalities of an API. This can also include testing for authentication and authorization flaws, uh, input validation, uh, and error handling. There are uh, six steps to uh, in manual testing, requirement analysis, test plan creation, test case creation, test case execution and defect logging and defect fix and re-verification. In a first step, a requirement analysis, a check for all endpoints. And second, we, we create a plan to uh, how to test the API's functionalities. And we create a and third step, we create test cases for endpoints. And the fourth step, we, we execute the test cases. Uh, if we find anything, uh, we lo log it. Uh, and then sixth step, we fix this, uh, uh, developer fix this uh, 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 configs or uh, functionalities uh, that are identified in a uh, uh, test case executions. Next, I will explain about bug suit. Uh, Bubsuit is a common, uh, most popular web application security testing tool that can be used for uh, API pen testing. It is commonly used for uh, web applications and uh, some uh, uh, 
for some uh, APIs, uh, speci uh, especially uh, it includes, uh, it also includes uh, features such as proxy, scanner, and a repeater that can be used to test for security vulnerabilities. As you can see in a, in a diagram, uh, uh, for a normal uh, web page, uh, we use a client and a proxy as a mediator to to capture the data, uh, capture the request data, and modify it. Modifying it, uh, we send back to server, and we get a, a response for it. Uh, as for a data, same process, uh, we get uh, data in uh, JSON or XML XML form. Next, uh, I get back to Nikhil or best practices. Yeah, coming to the best practices. Uh, best practices for API pen testing are set of guidelines and recommendations to follow when testing and testing the security of application program interface. So these are the best practices we can do so uh, so that we can secure the APIs. Uh, yeah, just go with it. First one. Understand the flow. So, as you see in the diagram, so uh, the user will uh, order the waiter. The ordered request is taken to the kitchen. So, the requested is uh, request is processed and provided to the uh, waiter for delivery. So, your order is sent to you. So, this is the flow of the uh, things that we go that we uh, occur in the restaurant or anything else. So. This flow needs to be uh, very uh, clear to everyone so that we can, uh, so the developers can uh, uh, modify the code. So to effectively test the security of an API, uh, it's crucial to understand the flow of the data and the requests within the API. So this includes comprehending the different API endpoints that represent specific resources or actions that the API can perform. Endpoints can be thought of an unique URIs, uh, each representing a specific function to or uh, task that an API can perform. Understanding the data types used in the API, such as JSON, XML, and the methods used for making the requests, so get, post, put, delete, so uh, these are essential for comprehending the in, um, <clears throat> interaction between clients and the API server. Additionally, understanding the headers, parameters, and the response code using in the API is crucial for understand, understanding how clients and servers communicate with each other. So these understandings must be done for the best practices of the API. So by having a clear understanding of how data on the request flow within the API, organizations can be better identify potential security vulnerabilities and the area of areas of uh, improvement. So uh, these are now we need to do uh, for the understand the flow of the API. So um, we need to understand the data types. And also, we need to understand the request that we are making, like get, post, delete methods. So, understand the headers and parameters and response codes used in the API. Yeah. And also, other, uh, we can use the uh, rate limiter. Oh, yeah. We need to use the rate limiter in uh, APIs for the base practice so that the uh, loads, loads that will come in. Uh, that encountered to the web server will be uh, like maintained with a rate, rate limiter. So uh, implementing the rate limiter is essential uh, for preventing the DOS attack. So uh, just now we got to see this uh, in the security release about the DOS attacks, like denial of service. 
So it's basically occurs when the uh, huge amount of requests arise from the users. So uh, we use rate limiter uh, for preventing the uh, devoice attacks and limiting the impact of uh, brute force attack as well. A rate, a rate limiter sets limits on the number of requests that can be made within a specific time of frame, preventing excessive traffic that could overload the API server. So a DOS attack occurs when the attacker sends the overwhelming, overwhelming number of uh, requests to the API, causing it to become unavailable to legitimate users. So the availability is the uh, main thing in a CII trade that the cybersecurity follows. So in order to maintain the availability, we need to implement the rate limiter here in the API as a best practice. So uh, by implementing the rate limiter, organization can ensure that the requests are processed fairly without negatively impacting the availability and the performance of the API. Yeah, that's all about the rate limiter. <clears throat> Next, we go with the input validation and sanitization. So as we can see in the picture, the client sends the request in the example uh, endpoint with invalid arguments. So we need to use the validation pipe here to validate the request that's sent by the client. So if the uh, request is uh, invalid, we can send it back to uh, users with the response code 400 uh, showing the uh, like it's a bad request. So we need to use this uh, this kind of input validation and data sanitation in the APIs to be uh, to be the best API. So uh, the validation validating and the sanitizing all the user inputs is crucial to prevent common security vulnerabilities such as injection attacks. So in injection attacks mm, uh, in the demo I have showed like. Uh, in the SQL injection, if the username parameter is sanitized, so we can't be able to log in as an admin. So uh, in that way, we need to uh, input validate uh, in validate the input. We can also uh, uh, eradicate a buffer overflows and other type of attacks. So input validation ensures that the data received by the API is in the expected format and within acceptable ranges. So for example, a phone number field should only accept uh, numerical characters and the password field should only accept the alphanumerical characters. So even the data sanitation is required, uh, it involves removing or uh, neutralizing potentially harmful characters or code from the user input to prevent any unintended consequences or exploitation. In the case of SQL injection, it will uh, it will detect the comments and and just uh, uh, throw back a request like a 400 uh, request the user uh, just detect in the comments in the query saying that uh, uh, just uh, look at the request that you made. Yeah, so the uh, by validating sanitation, uh, sanitizing the user input, uh, organization can uh, prevent malicious users for, uh, from exploiting vulnerabilities in the API and compromising the sensitive data. Yeah. And now we go with uh, encrypting the sensitive data. So the encryption is much more needed in the API, uh, API server. So uh, sensitive da data, both transit and at the rest, the rest will be uh, in the database and the trans even the transit data must be uh, uh, encrypted uh, to ensure its uh, confidentiality and protect it from the unauthorized, unauthorized access. So techniques such as uh, SSL and the TLS or AES encryption can be used to encrypt data transmitted between the clients and the server, preventing eavesdropping or interception by the attackers. Even the attackers intercept the request uh, in the middle like a man in the middle attack so if we are uh, tend to use ssl or TLS, tls encryption there is no way they can crack the uh, requests uh, that we made so uh, encryption of sensitive data at 
REST involves uh, encrypting data stored in the databases, as I said, or files to prevent unauthorized access. The storage medium is compromised. By encrypting the sensitive data, organization can ensure it, that it's uh, remain confidential data and protected from unauthorized access, even if the attackers manage to intercept or obtain it. So we need to ensure the uh, rest and the transit data to the API server must be uh, like, uh, <clears throat> yeah, must be uh, uh, encrypted. <clears throat> That's it. That's all about uh, encryption. So this can be the best practice of the uh, securing the API. Now, uh, conducting the regular security is testing. <clears throat> so, regular uh, like regular security testing is essential. So, we can ensure the ongoing security of an API. Yeah, penetration testing involves uh, actively testing the API for vulnerabilities by simulating real-world attacks and attempting to exploit weakness. So, vulnerability scanning tools can be used to automatically scan the API of for uh, unknown vulnerabilities and provide insights into potential security issues so by conducting the regular security testing or you can uh, like proactively identify and address vulnerabilities before they can ex they can be exploited by the attackers so we need to conduct a regular security security testing with the api to uh, to be more secure to from the attackers so the security testing should be ongoing process uh, with regular assessments, assessments scheduled to ensure that the API remains secure over time. Now we go with error handling. So uh, <clears throat> handling the errors in the API must be very strong. Ja, uh, <clears throat> they need to be designed to provide meaningful errors, error messages, and also uh, appropriate HTTP codes in the error request, like uh, in the input sanitization uh, validation. So they need to send the 400 uh, response code in order to uh, know the user that the request made by the user has some uh, like uh, invalid, invalid data. So here error handling must be meaningful uh, by throwing the error messages. So we need to show the appropriate HTTP codes when error occurs. So the proper error handling uh, helps prevent attackers from gaining unauthorized access or exploiting the vulnerabilities. So error messages should be avoid uh, like revealing sensitive information. So while providing enough information for developers to diagnose and fix issues. Yeah, HTTP status codes uh, status must be uh, uh, delivered uh, exactly, such as uh, 401 for unauthorized or 403 for forbidden, and should be used to indicate the appropriate response to uh, different types of errors. So, by implementing effective error handling procedures, so one can uh, reduce the risk of exploitation and ensure that the API remains uh, secure. Yeah, that's about error handling. Now we go for uh, secure authentication and authorization. So uh, for any uh, web server, we need to implement a strong authentication and authorization. So uh, we can use the OAuth or JWT or API keys to ensure that the uh, um, we are securing the authentication and authorization. So authentication is like, uh, confirms the user or who they say they are uh, maintaining the confidentiality of the information that is, that is in the database, ensuring the authorized, authorized uh, user. So while coming to authorization um, for the respective users, it will access the, it can, uh, they can be accessible to the respective uh, data that they have. Yeah, uh, now we go to uh, HTTPS. Yeah, as we all know, we need to use HTTPS, HTTPS over HTTP because it uses some encryption. 
uh, TLS encryption. So the all encrypted data transmitted between the clients and the server uh, will be prevented through this uh, HTTPS. Uh, so that the man in the middle attacks will be uh, reduced. Yeah. Uh, now we go for. Yeah, that's all for uh, that's all the topics we covered. Let us conclude the API pen testing. Yeah. One second. yeah for now we, we have seen the api pen testing is a critical aspect, uh, aspect of uh, web application security that helps in identifying uh, vulnerabilities oh, shit. yeah so am i audible uh, role sorry yeah, thank you. So, so these APIs are revolutionized the way applications and system communicate and exchange data. They may they have become the backbone of the modern software development, enabling seamless integration and interaction between the uh, different services and platforms. API provide a standard standardized and efficient way for developers. To leverage existing functionality on the data. However, with the increasing adoption of API security has become the press, uh, pressing corner. APS can be vulnerable to various security risks, including the unauthorized access, injection attacks, data breaches, and the denial of the service attacks. So uh, it is crucial for the organization to prioritize the API security and take proactive measures to protect the sensitive data, maintaining the system integrity and the ensure user privacy so by following uh, best practices such as implementing strong authentication and authorization mechanisms conducting a regular security testing so encrypting the sensitive data and validating the sanitized sanitized user input and handling the errors effectively organization can you know, mitigate the risk associated with the apis so additionally monitoring the api activities keeping the software update and providing proper training for uh, on API security are vital components of comprehensive security strategy. So, uh, yeah. So, a regular testing and monitoring should be conducted to identify the address and potential security vulnerabilities. So, uh, as the digital landscape continues to evolve, the importance of API security will only increase. Organization must remain vigilant and adapt with security practices to stay ahead of emerging threats. So by fostering a culture of security, regularly addressing the enhancing API security measures and staying informed about the latest security trends and best, best practices, organization can effectively mitigate risk and ensure that the uh, secure and reliable operation of their APIs. So, so in conclusion, uh, APS are powerful tools that enable seamless integration, uh, enhance functional functionality, and drive innovation. However, ensuring the security of APIs is paramount to protect sensitive data and maintain system integrity and build trust. So, by embracing API security best practices and staying proactive in addressing the security risks. Yeah, some uh, one can uh, <clears throat> like one can leverage the full potential of the APIs while safeguarding their systems and users. Yeah, thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you for your attention. So, any questions? Yeah, think you can use the questions i love for the questions
Hi guys, any questions you can ask?